Hey guys, so this is going to be your second lecture and we're going to be covering Illustrator in this. Um, I've already got Illustrator open here in the background, so let's get started. Um, you have some presets right here. Um, often you've just got letter, postcard, common, and you know, so the um, the letter, um, this one's going to come in at, an R, or at a uh, CMYK. Same with postcard. Um, common and HDTV are going to come in with RGB. You can click on more presets and it's going to have a whole bunch of them here. This is probably more typical of what you'd see with a new file sort of setup. Um, as you jump through these, you've got presets for mobile, for web, for print, etc. Um, for the most part, um, I it's just personal preference. I usually just end up going, I know what the size of pixels I need is. I know I need it in RGB. Um, I know I need it in 72 for screen. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, so typically, yeah, I usually just go in and custom size. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just choose um, letter for now. And let's go ahead and get into it. So create. Um, here's the interface. Um, again, I'm going to be using the Essentials Classic option right here. Uh, I just sort of like that, and I'm more used to the way that these buttons are labeled or laid out and that uh, this top menu is right here. Um, let's start going over the tools. So we've got the direct selection, or so the selection tool, and then the direct selection tool, which is the other one. Um, in the last lecture on Photoshop, we didn't get too big into it because it's kind of, kind of hard to talk about pixels when um, everything else is not pixels. Um, but again, pixel is just a square. It's, it's the resolution on your screen. Um, it's individual squares of uh, typically RGB or CMYK. And each of those has their own value and represents, you know, that individual spot in the drawing. A vector object, which is what Illustrator works with, not again. Um, oh, I hate this. Um, it works with what are called vector objects. And these are mathematical formulas. Actually, let me go grab something. Um, so just to show you guys real quick, this is an actual logo that I created at work with. Uh, this is the output of an SVG file, which is um, one of the native ways to output um, vector graphics. And you can see right here, we have a whole bunch of like random little characters and numbers and different things. Um, that's how uh, that's how SVGs are actually inter interpreted. Um, in this case, we just have um, a simple rectangle and it kind of just is what it is. Um, live in its best life here on my screen. So um, what they are made of is they're made of paths, which are these straight lines, and then there are these little points right here called anchors. Um, if I choose the selection tool, I select the whole thing right here and I can move it around. But if I choose the direct selection tool, I can click on individual parts of this and I can move them around separately from that. Similarly, if I click on a path with the direct slide, before I go too quick here, um, with the direct selection tool, I have this deselected. If I click on this path, I can delete that and then hit delete key. I can delete just that path. Whereas if I click on this anchor right here, it's going to delete that whole path and that the two lines that connect it. But you can see right here, I still have this anchor floating out here. Um, so it kind of gets weird where you can do some really interesting transforms with the material or with the uh, shapes that are going on in Illustrator. Um, I'm going to skip over the magic wand tool and the lasso tool. I typically don't use these for anything. Um, they have their uses, but I find them few and far between. Um, the most useful tool that I have that kind of takes forever to master is going to be this pen tool here. Um, I'm going to hit P and switch to that. Um, if you click with the pen tool, it's going to do solid points. If you hold down shift, it's going to constrain to, in this case, 45 degree angles. Um, and I can just click through and keep clicking. Um, when you find a spot to close a shape up with, you can see that if I hover over that, there's that little circle to the bottom right of the cursor. Um, that's gonna indicate that this will close this. So there, I've just completed and closed a shape. Um, with the pen tool, you can also click and drag. So if I start a drawing here, and then I click and hold down the mouse while doing this action, you can see that I'm drawing these weighted bars right here. And that's going to influence both before and after the bar. Whereas if I click again, it's going to go back to straight. So you can do kind of some weird things with this um, as far as drawing different shapes. Um, 
it is a useful thing, and I think it's probably one of the most powerful tools here in Illustrator. Um, let's get rid of these here, and we'll switch back. Um, oh, um, I guess I should show you guys the anchor point tool too. Let me go back to here. So right now we have all these different points right here. If I hit Control, uh, sorry, Shift C, um, which is it's in the menu with the pen tool, um, but if I hit Shift C, I bring up this tool. And you can actually take the anchor points or the lines or the paths rather and you can modify them um, and you can this is different from some of the other modifications so if i switch back to this direct selection tool um, i can modify actually it it does have a difference here so if i click on it with the direct selection tool and then start modifying it you can see that it's going to modify both sides of this but if i use this anchor point tool um, when I click and drag on this, it only modifies one side. Similarly, I can take this and I can the anchor point tool and I can click on the thing and it will reset it so that now it has no weighting on either side. So this would essentially reset these back to unweighted uh, angles right there. Um, the other option that I kind of jumped over real quick was the add anchor point tool and delete anchor point tool. So if there's something specific I'm doing where I need an anchor point here, so that I can put a bend in right there. Um, then you can go ahead and add those in. Otherwise, delete anchor point tool is the opposite. We're just going to go through and delete these anchor points. So there's different things you can do with it, um, but that's kind of how that one works. Um, so the only one from this menu here that I really use is going to be the arc tool. Um, you know, you can draw your arcs, or you can just draw your own lines like that. Um, there is no real difference to the program. These are both basically just arc. There's paths um, and weighting. So there's not really much difference to them. Um, you can see right there, you've got the handles, got the handles. It doesn't treat it any different. The arc tool, like a lot of these other tools I'm about to show you, is just sort of a quick auto completion thing, all right? Um, I never use line segment. I never use spiral. I never use rectangular grid and I never use polar grid. Um, I can't imagine a use for some of these, but um, if you find one, go for it. Um, I literally couldn't tell you anything I would use it for. Um, you actually, let me go back to this. You do have some settings as far as the, you know, if you click with a lot of these tools, you can bring open some of these settings um, and it'll auto generate it for you. But um, again, I typically don't bother with that. So let me get this and we'll show you guys text. So. Um, T is for text. Um, you end up with all the uh, usual text options up here in the top. Um, you've got the opacity for the fill. You've got the character, which will change the font. You've got the regular or the option right here, which will change if you have a um, a dynamic font. It will give you different options here for which of these options, um, you know, as far as weighting um, is concerned. Um, when you place text, if you click it'll do a single just like line right here. And so if I take this um, and I just keep typing, it's gonna keep going off into Foreverland over there. Um, the alternative with the text tool is to draw a shape like this. And uh, modern versions of Illustrator are actually gonna fill that in, um, which is kind of nice because, you know, especially if you're trying to figure out how big the text looks, um, that's a nice hint. Um, if you were to shrink this afterwards, you'll get this little red box right here. And so if I have the selection tool open right now and I hover over this, see that little like, uh, I don't know, connect the dot sort of grid thing that popped up right there. If I click on this, um, you can see that it has this little like, again, a text sort of thing um, with the icon. And if I click here, it's actually gonna let me continue expanding this. Um, so if I just keep pasting this in, I can come through and create a whole bunch of different sections of text. And these will actually adjust themselves dynamically as I change the size of different boxes. Um, so that is useful. It does have its uses um, if you're doing multiple page layouts. If I delete one of these in the middle, um, it'll actually shift all that text around. So it does have its uses um, as far as placing text. Um, another thing you can do Set that to default. Um, is you can 
click inside of that. Um, let me kind of show you guys what I've got. So I've got this text, and see how they, uh, the little text cursor there has a circle around it? That's saying this will fill up this box right here. Um, and so then again, um, if I shrink this, actually I don't know if it's gonna use the same weird box size. Yeah, I guess it will, look at that. Um, so you can do that. Um, as far as text following, um, you see how it has that little like, there's like a little trail running through the cursor. It's kind of hard to see because it, it's blocked by everything. Um, but this will place text on a path right here. Um, when you do this, hit escape first and you'll have to come back out. If I wanted it centered on here, I'd have to grab this side. See how I've got the little, like, uh, that rightward pointing arrow with the thing. Um, I'd have to move this to there. This is your center line. Um, you can change if it's above or below with this. And then this is your right side. Oops. Um, and this obviously will change right justification. Once you have it set up, you can center it um, and do a bunch of different things though. Obviously this gets weird um, when it does certain things. Um, let me go and do one other thing too, because this usually comes up every once in a while, um, is actually placing text on a circle. Um, if you are gonna do this, um, let's see, see how it's not, it's not really kind of um, changing to the path. So if you wanna have text around a circle, um, what I would do is I would use the direct selection tool, copy the bottom half like here, and I'm going to do Control X, which is cut, Control V, which is paste. Um, and then now this is a line, and I can place my upper text up here. And then I can come down here and place my bottom text down here. And then flip that around. And um, if I was smart, I would have saved that original circle. But that looks about right right there. Um, let me see what the lines look like. If you hit uh, control Y, you can toggle on this preview mode, um, just so you can kind of expect what's inspect what's going on. Um, and you can hit D, which is what I've been doing to set these back to default colors, which is white fill black stroke. Um, so there's that. Um, we'll probably mess around with that at some point um, for your project. Um, brush tool, or paintbrush tool, um, this is kind of more, if you're gonna be doing stuff like this, um, go to Photoshop. Like it's, this kind of has some other analogous tools here like the pencil, uh, wait, that's not the pencil, that's the pencil. Um, you know, it, it just doesn't work as well in here and it doesn't do the same thing like you would expect in Photoshop, right? Um, so it's not something that, you're really going to be using so i'm just going to kind of skip over these um some of these right here um i do want to jump back oh um let me do polygons and stars real quick though um polygon um if you hit the up and down arrow keys and see i'm still dragging this if you hit the up and down arrow keys you can change the number of sides that it has um with the star tool you can do the same thing um, except that you can hold down control and it also change how far that sticks out. So you can do a couple different things here um, with those. It's just that this has more flexibility than this one, but this creates more geometry. Um, so anyway, with those down, um, let me cover rotation first. So right now this is rotated. If you have it selected with the selection tool, it doesn't have a fill, okay. Um, if you hover near the corners, you can get the rotate and you can rotate around the center. Um, but there's also a rotation tool right here. And if you hit R on the keyboard, you can bring it up and see how there's that little kind of very light teal cross icon there. If you click somewhere, you can rotate around that point. Um, if you click again, you can rotate around that other point. So there's different kind of ways that you can kind of oops, mess with this. Um, often what I end up doing is finding like a corner anchor point and rotating around that. Um, it has a, oh, my doggy's having a problem. You all right? All right. Um, different dog tonight. Um, so anyway, that's the rotation tool. Um, this is your scale tool. These are basically things that are already incorporated 
into the cursor um, shear tool that's already something that's part of the shear options here and these are kind of trash um, sorry whoever works at Adobe um, I just like what am I doing with this you know I don't I've never found good uses for shear if I am it's usually sh hammering something that isn't supposed to be there into something else um, the reflect tool so um, this does come in handy where if I've got a shape like this transform reflect and I can just flip it there you can see the preview and before and after previews um, you can change the angle as well um, with that but this one in, case, in particular doesn't matter too much um, this next one's the width tool this one's kind of a new one that I've found I kind of appreciate um, let me just do what the demo did there so if I've got this um, path or you could have let me just add to this path um, so let's say I've got this path right here I can choose this width tool and it'll let me come in here and change the width of various um, points um, again limited uses as to how this could be applied I can't think of any I just think it's a fun little thing to use um, um, while we're talking about strokes, we do have this. I have my stroke menu open right now, actually. So um, we can talk about these, but there are different options for how you end edges or the uh, the caps on the lines if they're not a closed shape, um, how corners are handled, and um, we can't do a line stroke right now. But um, let me draw a little demo, oops, a little demo shape right here for you. Um, and um, so first let's jump up the weight here so we've got something going on um, and let's set these all to the left there and then we'll get three copies of this here all right so first one that's all the three normal ones um, so let's this middle one you can see if I switch the cap it's gonna round these corners out from that point right there if I switch the corner to this other rounded one, you can see that it rounds that corner there instead of coming to a point. Um, and then this third one, it's going to cap it flat as kind of like a hard edge. And then this um, is going to cap that as well. Now, why would you want some of these middle ones? What's eventually going to happen, and some of you might run into this, is if I have this point right here, see how if I make this really, really kind of pointed right there? You, uh, move this out of the way. Um, and we do have a limit on it though. Um, yeah, so if you sometimes you end up with like these weird things that can shoot out from these if you don't have um, a limit that's set to an appropriate number here. So if you do see that kind of, hey, this is shooting out real far, well, you can just fix it by doing that or by doing that. Um, though I think this with a reasonable number something like 10 um, is gonna oops is gonna be a bit better of a service to you where it just kind of stops ah, grab it stops drawing it further out at a certain point and defaults to that behavior that's just a glitch okay um, something else I should point out right now too um, as I move that behind there you see how that kind of got blocked out um, when you have a shape that you're drawing um, as you start drawing it it's going to fill this area in from start to finish so you don't see it on that first line segment right there right because there's it's just drawing the line straight across but as soon as i do a third point it's going to connect the first and third as a fill um, and it's going to do that until i close it up so keep in mind that this will happen, um, and if you don't want that to happen, um, go ahead and get rid of your stroke, and then maybe come back and redraw your stroke later. Um, another option that you have is you can go to Object, Path, and Outline Stroke. I would highly recommend doing this anytime you have um, shapes that you're going to scale. So if I take these two shapes right here, Object, Path, Outline Stroke, um, what I ended up with now is I have, um, let me ungroup this. Um, so I have this shape right here, 
which is this triangle, but then this black area is still here, that's the stroke, right? But if we look at in preview mode, for the first one, we still have just one line here, whereas this, we have that same line, and then we have this outer line, which is the outline of the stroke. Um, and the difference is, um, Illustrator strokes are going to remain what they are. So this is a nine point stroke, this is a nine point stroke. But if I take these and I scale them way down, see how that one remained at nine point, but this one stayed skinny, right? And it's because this is not a nine point stroke anymore. This is a solid physical piece of geometry in Illustrator. So you guys will eventually run into this problem. You'll go, hey, I just scaled this down and now everything looks wrong. It's because you didn't outline your strokes. So uh, keep that in mind as we move forward. Um, I'll go ahead and delete that and then we'll take this and we have that. Okay, um, let's see, what else do we wanna go over? Do not touch this button, stay away from the perspective grid. It's a, well, why don't I just show you? You'll run into it eventually. If you click it, it has this weird thing and I always forget how to turn it off, but it's right here is how to turn it off. Um, one other bug I did run into as well, um, if you guys were messing around with it and it kept turning grayscale on you as you're doing stuff, um, you have to come in here to this menu and change this to the correct color format. For some reason mine um, was formatted to grayscale and I like every time I went in here to change the color, it would go back to grayscale. So if you do run into that, um, it's going to be under that menu, just change that preset. Okay. Um, Let's see, I wanted to show you guys this. This is a useless tool that I just have fun using sometimes. Um, so this is the mesh tool. Um, I Again, I rarely find good uses for it, but sometimes it's just fun to use. So if you click, you see how it adds all these crossing lines in here. Um, and then these are all valid points and lines and anchors that you can mess around with. You can use the um, anchor point tool. Nope, that's not what it's called. Oh, it is, yeah, anchor point tool. Gosh, I always forget. <laughs> um, sometimes I forget, and then I call it the wrong thing. So um, you can do different things with these tools. And then once you have these selected, you can actually change the individual points um, that are here um, to different colors, um, do different things with them. Um, you can select, and again, I'm using the direct selection tool. You can select actual full areas in here and change the color you can and I selected multiple in that instance um, oops I did not select the whole thing that time or I did select the whole thing that time so you can do different things um, it's kind of a fun tool to mess around with but again I don't find any actual practical uses for it um, besides occasionally creating like a weird background um, but more typically um, what I might find myself using is the uh, gradient tool right here. And if you click on this, um, it'll change this to a gradient for that fill. Um, you can see right here that the, uh, the stroke itself is actually still solid and I can switch this and also make this a gradient. Um, once you have something set to a gradient, you can hit the G key and, and this is your gradient tool right here. And I can actually change the way that this gradient is laid out. Actually the strokes I have to change right here. So if I set this to 180, you can see that, and I actually crank up the stroke size. You can see that now I have sort of one stroke going that way to white, and then this one going uh, in black to white in the opposite direction. Um, when you have a stroke, sorry. Um, when you have these, when a stroke is set to something, you can change um, what those settings are over here in the stroke menu or the gradient menu. Um, you can change like where the where the different points are drawn. So um, actually, let me switch the fill because that's easier to see. Gradient. Um, so see how that kind of completely shifted its position. Um, you can uh, click on the bottom line. You can see that there's like a little plus icon to add new points in here. Double click on them, um, and you can change their color. Again, this might be one that you run into is locked up. Um, or locked into a grayscale thing. So if you do need to do that, you might have to um, go to the color and then change the setting back to uh, CMYK here as well. Um, so then um, there's also a couple presets here. If you click on this drop down right here, you've got actually let me do it on my gray or on my uh, stroke. 
So you can change some of these. Um, get that real weird vibe. Oh, um, now that I have this closed up as well, um, once a shape has a closed interior, you can use the align stroke. So by default, it's going to be centered on it. You can also align stroke to the inside or the outside. Um, so you can jump around to those as you want. Um, let me go back to gradients. So, um, yeah, those are gradients. They kind of do what they do. Um, Right now, um, if I have this selected, um, I can um, I can hit like the, the comma key and it'll switch that to white. If I hit the period key, it'll switch it back to that gradient. And if I hit the slash key, so these are all three keys in a row, it'll change it back or it'll just get rid of that. If uh, right now the gradient is on top over here, if I hit X, the fill is on top and I can hit, you know, whichever of those keys is appropriate to what I want to do, right? Um, let's change the fill. So there's the fill, gradient, and empty. And if it's empty, then we can see through that area. Whereas if I change this to a uh, solid, you can't see through it, right? Um, if you do shift X, it will rotate or it'll flip which uh, fill and stroke you have for the patterns. So um, that's how you kind of use those. Um, the eyedropper tool, um, that's going to be this one right here. It's going to select whatever you have and duplicate those styles. So in this case, I just took this really fancy box and converted it to oops, look like that one. Um, just it's been rotated. So that's why it doesn't do that. So that if I rotate that, now they're the same, basically the same. Um, all right, let me throw something together real quick, and I'll show you guys the symbol tool. Uh, one sec. All right, so I just made this weird little whatever it is here. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this right here. Um, I don't have any strokes on it. Double check, no stroke, no stroke, cool. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to group it. Actually, I'm going to scale it down because I don't want it to come in that big. So let's do something like that. Right click, group, and then um, there's this little box right here called symbols. If you can't find it there, um, it's going to be under window and symbols. Um, and there's a couple weird things in there right now, but I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it in there. Um, doesn't matter what we call it for this demo. Um, you can change dynamic or static. I'm going to keep it on dynamic. Make sure it's set to graphic right here. Registration is in the center and hit OK. Um, and so now you can see that it's here in that menu, so I can take this and delete it. And if I hold down on this, I can get Shift S, which is the symbol sprayer tool. And what this is going to do is it's going to kind of like shoot a whole bunch of these out, right? Um, and this can be useful for kind of patterning something in the back of your project. Um, you know, just creating a whole series of these little things. Um, so now that I've got them out there, I can choose the symbol shifter tool, which is going to let me kind of move these around in a group. Um, they look like weird eyes now, so now I'm getting creeped out. But um, symbol scruncher tool, if I hold this down, they'll move towards the center. If I hold down alt, they'll move away from it. If I choose the symbol sizer tool, then as I click and drag on them, it'll change their sizes to be bigger. And if I hold down alt, it'll make them smaller. Um, we have the spinner tool, so you can kind of change the direction that they are all facing. Um, this one is relative to the proximity that you are from them, so as you get further away, um, it'll affect them differently. Um, there's the stainer tool, and this will... Um, oh, I did black, so that's not going to help. Um, let's change the fill on this to... Something not black, like I've been vibing on this color. I don't know why. Um, where is it? Oh no. Oh, one second. Hey, it recovered. Okay. Um, so, uh, what was I doing? I was using the stainer. So, um, oops like that stainer um, so it's going to do different 
color transforms on these so I can kind of do weird stuff with it like that. Um, again, holding Alt will bring it back to sort of its more default state. Um, so obviously, again, different uses for this. Um, but it will typically, I forget which direction that one goes, stainer. Oh, it does it based on the color you have selected. So if I do this, um, whereas if I do this, so you can do different things with it, whereas holding down Alt is going to bring it back to the natural color. Um, the screener tool is going to make them more transparent. So if you wanted to kind of hide some of them or make them tra um, well transparent, um, you could do that. And then, oh yeah, and then obviously holding Alt um, and working with them is going to make them uh, less transparent. Um, stay away from the styler. That's kind of hard to explain. Um, and we're 30 minutes in already. Um, okay, so that's kind of just that tool. Um, stay away from that. We're not going to do graphs in here. It's Illustrator. Um, artboards, you can create new boards for your artwork um, by placing them this way. Um, you can also, if you're in the same setup as I am, hit Escape, clear out of all the tools, and you end up with Document Setup, Edit Artboards, um, and then you can click New. Um, when you're here, I think you can just click New anyway. It's a nice little shortcut. I, for some reason, I rarely use it. Um, just that's the way my brain works. Um, let's undo those. Um, oh, quick movement tools. I guess I probably should have done these at the start. Hand. Um, hand is just like in Photoshop. Um, hold down spacebar, click and drag. Um, the zoom is going to be relative to your position, so it'll zoom in on where your cursor is. Um, zoom in or out, rather, based on where your cursor is. So um, you can do different things as far as moving around the page or hold down spacebar. Um, as far as these color options down here, let's get rid of this. Um, let me switch back to a rectangle too. So um, right now it's um, set to have this kind of greenish fill and no stroke, which is what the white with that slash all the way through means. So if I draw this, you can see I have a rectangle um, with no stroke on it. If I hit D, it'll reset it. Oops deselect it. D, it'll reset it back to the fill, uh, white fill and the, uh, and the uh, black stroke. So if I draw a rectangle now, it'll do that. If I have this selected and I hit D, it'll obviously apply that. Um, whereas if I have the eyedropper tool, I can select that and have it inherit those options. Um, you can, oh, we kind of already covered that, didn't we? Yeah, I think we did. All right. Um, let me switch a little bit over. So let me get rid of these. Um, let me bump up the stroke. Where did it? it keeps hiding behind here? Okay. So, um, quick demo with a different tool, and these are going to help me kind of show you guys what's going on. So right now I have just this uh, two squares, two circles. You can see there they are in the preview or in the outline mode. Um, the tool I want to show you is the Pathfinder. It's this little one right here. Again, window Pathfinder. Um, and so this has a couple different options. I am, I do find myself using this from time to time, but usually not. Um, usually it's kind of for like if I'm making something fairly complex and I have a bunch of different shapes I want to join. So um, right, the first one's going to be this. Um, it's going to be Unite, and it's going to take all the geometry of these two and merge them together. So if I do that with both of these shapes, you can see that now they're merged together. All right. Um, the next one is subtract, or minus front rather. So it's going to take the one that's on top and subtract that from the one that's behind. So this will be subtracted from this square. Um, whereas if I was to move this to the front, it will subtract that from there. Um, this is analogous, or there's the opposite of this last one here, which is minus back. So this will subtract the, um, it will subtract this back one from this front one. So you see you end up with that shape right there and that shape right there. Um, if I do that, you can see kind of the polar opposite of how those two are working. Um, the next one that's on here is going to be this uh, intersect. So it's going to get only the area that's highlighted or that would overlap between these. Um, this has some uses. Again, um, occasionally you run into them. Um, but it's not, you know, it's not as useful as I think the merge is. 
Um, the exclude is going to take the overlapping area and get rid of that and nothing else. Um, anytime you want to mess with these after you've done one of these transforms, you'd have to select it, right click, and choose ungroup, and now you can move them around um, and do different things with them. Let's see, get reset here. Okay. Um, so this other one right here is going to create its divide, and what it's going to do is create three separate areas in our case. So we now we have the original two kind of main areas, and then that overlap. Same thing here, the original two, and then the overlap. Um, so if I ungroup this, now you can see that we have sort of those different areas and these different areas. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, merge is going to kind of do what the other one did, which is uh, actually no, merge is the one. Merge is the one I don't like. Stay away from these other three right here. Um, I've had problems with them in the past um, where you end up with, I'm not seeing it now, but you end up with weird geometry from some of these. Um, I think it's this one. I think it's outline is the one that gets real weird. Yeah, see how it has like, <laughs> I have it deselected and yet it's got these weird lines here. Um, so stay away from those kind of three. It's this, the top row here, the first kind of two or three here, and this last one are our first two and this last one are your kind of bread and butter um, as far as shape geometry. Um, let's see. Let me check. Nope. All right. Um, let's talk about blends. So um, actually, let's leave that up. Let's put that there. Um, so blends are kind of this cool thing. Um, we skipped over them a minute ago. It's on... You can do them in one of these other, where is it? One of these other ones does blends, doesn't matter. Um, what blends are is you can take kind of one thing and move it into another and um, and Illustrator will kind of work with you a little bit. So if I've got these two here, um, I can select both of them. I can go to object, uh, blend and do make and it's going to do this kind of color geometry um, transition from there to there and then i can also do this to that um, it might not like this we'll see yeah no there you go um, so you can do kind of weird things with this again i don't know when i would use this in an actual project um, often what I find myself using blends for is if I have two areas um, and I want to kind of get a couple of color steps between these where I'm like, I want to kind of, yeah. Um, so you can do blend, make, and then what this actually is, and it's not kind of being visibly shown to you right now, is it's actually a bunch of different steps. So I can choose blend options. Um, right now it's smooth color, so it's going to take this color, merge it into that. It's basically a gradient, right? Um, what you can do is specified steps. And so right now it's 256 steps. Um, if I just change this to six or seven, you can see that it now has all these different, a couple different little steps here that I can use um, as a gradient. And um, one of the fun ways that you can actually use it, um, use this, um, is once you create that, you can right click on it Oh no, you've got to go back to the menu, huh? Um, blend, expand, and now I have, oh, now I can ungroup it. And now I have a whole bunch of these little panels that I can kind of mess around with um, and do different things with. So um, that's fun. I don't know. I like that. I think it's a cool little thing that you can do stuff with. Um, so anyway, those are blends. Um, you can have them follow a path too, but um, I don't know. Again, kind of, what are we, 40 minutes in? <laughs> um, let's see. Um, oh, um, let's go back to text real quick. So um, if you place text, um, and I'm going to, 
make this real nice and large so we can see. So right now I have two pieces of text. They're basically the same thing, right? Um, what I'm going to do is right click on this one and do create outlines. And if I go to the preview, you can see that now I have kind of, there's basically geometry here. This geometry is actually editable just like anything else is, um, any other vector is in Illustrator. Um, whereas if I go up here, it's still just text. The difference is that I can edit this text, but this is just a shape now. So um, when you are completely done with something, especially a logo, you should always take that text out. It's the same issue um, that I mentioned when we had that circle with, um, nope. So if I had this circle here, actually, let me get, let me get that right there. We'll give this some stroke. I'm just trying to get a good example so you guys understand what I'm talking about. Um, so if I have this text thing that I was doing earlier, um, and then that goes on the inside and then comes down. Okay, so if you had something like this, um, one of the issues you'd run into, um, like I said, was if you take this and shrink it, see how that um, area does that? So if you're working with a logo, you should always make sure that first, anytime you have a stroke, um, you would take path and outline stroke. So that solves that particular issue. Um, so now it should remain basically the same. It's um, scalable infinitely. Um, but if someone else is, and I mentioned this using, I think I mentioned this, maybe I'm doubling down. I don't know, it's worth repeating. Um, if you're going to export something with text in it, make sure you outline that text because there's no guarantee that the person you're sending it to is going to have a copy of that font. So anytime you do that, you would also do create outlines of all your text for your logo. Um, and this will make it not only safe to send, but also safe for that person to receive, um, oops, uh, or rather, it's, sorry, safe to send, but also safe to scale down um, so that it doesn't get affected by anything like that. So uh, make sure you're doing that with your font scaling. Um, let me think here. Oh, um, glyphs. I didn't talk about glyphs. So glyphs is this little icon right here, but again, um, window. It's under character. It's character, no, type, glyphs. Oh, uh, you guys probably can't see that, um, but it's under the type glyphs menu right here. Um, but it's this menu right here. And what it is is um, there are fonts out there that actually have all kinds of like your uh, kind of wingding fonts. Um, let's see. So I can type normally, but then if I want one of these other ones in here, you can access this glyphs menu. Um, and if you double click on something, you can actually get like scissors. You know, um, I find this useful because you can take this scissors, or actually, hey, let's do that. And then you can create an outline of that. And in like three seconds, I now have an editable version of this that I can apply like a gradient to. Um, so that's why glyphs are really useful. There are some fonts that are basically just glyph, glyph libraries um, that you can access um, and can help you kind of add features to your project. Um, not 100% useful in every case, but hey, there's sometimes things that come up. Um, and again, it really depends on your font that you're working with. So if I change my font to emoji one, um, now I have all the emojis that I can mess with. Um, and if I create outlines, I can take the teeth out of this. No, nope. ungroup. Now I can take the teeth out of it. Um, or I don't know. I don't know. Go crazy with it. You can do stuff with these. Um, yeah. So um, that's Illustrator. Um, we are going to be doing a logo later in the week for your milestone. Um, so make sure you guys practice with um, especially the, um, the pen tool, Pathfinder. So the pen tool, 
um, Pathfinder tool as far as being able to take, um, oops, make it so I can see what's going on here. Um, pen tool, Pathfinder tool, um, so being able to draw stuff using the default shapes, um, doing subtractions, um, being able to apply fills, um, so both a fill and a stroke, or um, changing a stroke, making sure that these weird little pointy caps don't go crazy if that's what's going on. Um, don't forget to path, uh, oops, deselected it, path, uh, outline stroke. Um, so just always, you know, just a couple different things that you'll be using as part of creating logos. So um, just be ready for that, um, and we will cover um, a couple other things on Thursday, and then we'll give you, and then you'll have a milestone to work on again. Um, so see you guys at class.